Good morning, it's Monday the 26th of June 2017. Warm welcome along to Television Centre Bracknell for this morning's United Kingdom talk, boys and girls. Can someone like the um thing there? Otherwise, I can't um see your messages, unfortunately. I, I can see the first few, but then it doesn't continue. I would much appreciate that if someone could just like the little thing there. Yes, good morning to you. A lovely day outside, I have to say. Beautiful sunlight. It's beaming all over the garden. I put the cat out. First thing I do in the morning, I go downstairs and put the cat straight out. And round and round she goes. Thank you, Diane. Thank you, Adam. Appreciate that. Um, round and round she goes in her circles. Round and round and round. I was looking at her yesterday when she's doing these circles. Round and round at her. And one of her back legs doesn't move. It kind of is dragged around. And I'm wondering if that's why she's doing it. When I went to the doctor, he wasn't that... When I went to the vet with her, um, he wasn't that concerned. Or she wasn't that concerned. Oh, I've got a lovely vet. Oh, she's so compassionate. Such a nice vet. And I try to take her now sort of every uh, three months or so. But um, anyway, tomorrow the cat lady cometh. She's having her very first gr uh, groom. Groom. Clean shampoo type thing. I don't know how she's going to react to that. And the only thing is with an elderly cat... You can, they, they try and fight back, but unsuccessfully. They, they don't usually get a scratch in anymore. They're a little bit too weak to fight back now, so you can do what you want with them. <laughs> you know, pick them up. Even those cats that you used to pick up that hate being picked up, you can pick them up once they're old and they can't do anything about it. <laughs> the cat lady cometh tomorrow at 10 o'clock for 40 quid. Oh dear, was it 45 quid? I can't remember, something like that. Anyway, so nice sunny day. I've managed to put the bins out already this morning and my neighbour, he's got a few days away. He's up in the Lake District. Ever been there? Oh, beautiful place. I was there when I was 15 or 16 years old and I was scout patrol leader. Cubs, do, oh no, it was a scout. I promised to do my best, to do my duty to God and the Queen to help other people and keep the scout law. That is the scout promise. Look, I can do the sign as well. Can you do the sign? Who's in the scouts? Oh, some of my best times ever in the Scouts. I remember going up to the Lake District and it was just a stunning place. Not, we were staying in fields. We stayed in a farmer's field. It was beautiful there. I just remember it and um, canoeing around Lake Windermere. I mean, it's, it really is a wonderful experience. The weather can be a bit dodgy up there, a lot of rain, that sort of thing, but you don't let it bother you, dear. We're all hard men. We are hard men that can cope with the inclement conditions of the United Kingdom. But although it's not today, it's beautiful today. It's going to get a lot of rain tomorrow, apparently, here in the UK. Uh, so the bins are out. I, I do fill up my bins now. As you see, it's all the cat litter. Well, not the cat litter, the cat newspaper. It really fills up completely. My bin is so heavy. So heavy, full of used newspapers. It really is. Let's say hello to some uh, early people this morning. Good morning to Mr. Gazal. Good morning, who says, hello, bro. Oh, I, I, I'm not used to being called bro. I'm a bit old to be called bro. I'm sure I am. Good morning to you, sir. Morning to Adam the Plumber. Morning, Adam. Hope you had a nice day yesterday. We had a fantastic night at the karaoke last night. Wow. What a fantastic And such a difference from last week. Everyone turned up last night. Everyone who goes to Central Station, actually. They all turned up last night. It was wonderful, as well as some new people. Um, let me see, Mandy, uh, Lady Phoenix, and I think probably her husband or, or partner, uh, David, were there. Wonderful, wonderful singers. Oh, my God. They were really, really good singers. Uh, in fact, almost everyone, except me, of course, was a really good singer last night. Very, very good in there. And um, I've said before, it's a fantastic sound system in there. You must come down. OK, karaoke every Sunday night at the Camden Eye in Camden Town, just across the road from the tube station, 8 until 11 o'clock, 8 p.m. till 11 p.m. OK, some bonzo put on the uh, thing last night. Three hours, not worth going. Are you serious? They're all three and a half hours, three hours. Miserable people. What's wrong? Well, don't come then. Why did you feel the necessary? Why did they feel it necessary to make comment like that? Just don't go. Don't go. Don't go. Now, who sung that? Yazoo, wasn't it? Yazoo. And you remember the other one from her with Yazoo and the plastic population? The only way is up. Ow! Baby! 
You and me now. Yes. Good morning, Adam. <clears throat> I'm in two places at once today. Here I am with this live television spectacular. And also I'm on the radio, on Upload Radio. Completely different show. Isn't that fab? I'm everywhere. Everywhere. I am a network. I am a live network, yes. Uh, good morning to Stafford. <clears throat> what do you mean, call me Chris? What does that mean, call me Chris? What do you mean, call me? We're doing a show here, dear. I haven't got time to call people, have I? God's sake, man, what is wrong with you? Diane, good morning to Diane. Oh, Diane, you're always there. You never let me down, do you, Diane? Thank you, those of you that are sharing the show on your walls today. Much appreciated, as always. It's very kind of you to do so. Hello to Peter O'Brien. Uh, Mark Cording's there. He was there last night, singing away. We did have a good time last night, didn't we, Mark? And it was all going so well. And at the end, he, Mark often helps me out with my bags. It's very kind of him. At the end, I said, well, I'll see you soon. He said, well, I might not be here next week. And you just, oh, you let me down at the last minute like that, Mark. <clears throat> all telling us what a wonderful night you've had. And then he comes out with... I might not make it next week. Oh, it was like a knife going into my wounds. It really was. I felt like Jesus being now to the cross. I really did. Hurtful. Hurtful, dear. <laughs> Morning to John Aitken. Watched some of the karaoke last night. What can I say that won't offend? Shut up, John. Shut up, John. How dare you? I think the sound at your end was a little bit uh, distorted last night. It wasn't in the, it's a fantastic sound in the club. I was having to push through a little bit more. I don't think I had it turned up behind the bar, but I'll try and sort that out for next week. I can't have the mixer too loud at my end. Otherwise you get distortion, you see. I think you might have had distortion yesterday. Uh, good morning to Jan Gerling. Good morning, Jan. All right, darling. Hope you're uh, uh, well on this very, very pleasant Monday morning. Do you have a garden, Jan, or, or a balcony or something like that? You must get out there. Yeah, talking of gardens and balconies, I was surprised at this. Now, uh, we've all seen these um, uh, terrible stories of the uh, uh, of the block in um, night, uh, Kensington going up at the weekend. Uh, uh, a couple of, it's a couple of weeks ago now, isn't it? I found this article in one of the papers on Friday, actually, it was, in, in the Daily Mail. Did you know people have barbecues on their balconies? Did you know that? I mean, that, that's just madness, isn't it? <clears throat> Story here. Residents must be banned from having barbecues on balconies in any tower blocked with danger cladding. Local councillors were told just... To, I mean, you, you, why do people have to be told this? Isn't it just common sense not to have a barbecue on a balcony? For God's sake. Underground car parks must be cleared and closed if there's rid that a vehicle fire could spread to Gladden. Yeah, that's fair enough. Uh, but I, I, I didn't know people have barbecues on their balconies, do they? I don't understand bar. I really don't understand barbecues, do you? And why is it the bloke always does the cooking? Have you noticed that, ladies? You know when you spend weeks and months and years cooking in the kitchen... Then you decide to have a barbecue and a bloke takes over for some reason and, and doesn't cook it properly. And everyone gets food poisoned. Why is that, men? Why do you do that? Why aren't you in the kitchen every day helping your wife, partner, girlfriend, boyfriend? Why is that? Why is suddenly the man take... Especially if it's a party. Especially if it's a party, isn't it, girls? So you've got everyone coming over. Remember, you're always the one doing the cooking. Christmas time, normal time, Easter time. It's always you, ladies, who is in the kitchen, unthanked, unloved, doing all the cooking. There's the bloke sitting down there in front of another football match. A great big fat thing sitting in an armchair somewhere with his feet up. Or sprawled across the city somewhere. And you're in the kitchen all that time, every single day. Then everyone comes round the party. And suddenly the bloke does all the cooking. And of course gets all the praise. Why is, how does that happen? Why do you let that happen, ladies? You must beat your men in front of all the people. Don't treat me like that. Beat them, beat them down. And you don't get any other thanks throughout the rest of the year. All right, you might get a box of chocolates for Mother's Day. That's about it. 
maybe a you know a a, a a bunch of cheap flowers from the petrol garage on 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 um on uh, on your birthday something like that or Valentine's Day but you don't get the thanks all these people come over to your house once a year once a year in the middle of August and the bloke's doing a bar. oh oh that's wonderful John that's wonderful Patrick Wonderful what you're doing to that barbecue. Oh, lovely food today. And the bloke's lapping it all. Oh, thanks very much. Thanks very much. The woman's sitting there in the corner knowing full well that for the other 363 days of the year, or 364, is it? I don't know. <clears throat> 365 if it's a leap year. They don't get any thanks. The bloke does it one day. Oh, everyone's over him. Why is that, ladies? I want to know why that is. Uh, good morning to... Adam says, I was in the Scouts. I was a Scout leader. Yes, so was I. I was a, no, I wasn't a Scout leader. I was a Cub leader. I was an Arcala for the third Roehampton Scouts in the 1980s. When I was, I think I was 23 at the time. Yeah, that was good. I enjoyed doing that. That's great. Great laugh doing that. Lots of responsibility, though. Uh, Vectis says, hello, bro. Your jacket looks sick. Sorry? Are we going out to other countries this morning as well or something? Is it this is, this is a new language, dear? A new language? Ah, <laughs> oh, thank you, John. Yaz and the plastic, plastic population, wasn't it? The only way is up. Oh, <clears throat> yeah. Also, the theme music to that ghastly programme, The Only Way is Essex. I hope you don't watch any of that. Any of you. You don't watch The Only Way is Essex. Oh, dear, dear, dear me. Uh, good morning to Christina Ewing. We love the surname Ewing. Morning, Christina. Have you been to South Fork Ranch in Ewing? You're in Texas, aren't you? Is it a Texan name, Ewing? Are you near where they did Dallas? I don't think that'll ever come back again, Dallas. Well, it, Dennis is coming back again. I mentioned that uh, last week. That's that's had a reboot, but we're not with any of the original characters at all. I have seen it. Not impressed so far. Not impressed. But I don't see Dallas ever coming back now. I think they gave it a second go and it didn't quite work out for them, which I think is a great pity. If I had the money, <clears throat> and you, I mean, one lottery win wouldn't do it. That wouldn't be enough money, unfortunately. But if I had the money, then I would pay all those actors again. And what's her name? Cynthia, Cynthia, someone who wrote the last series of Dallas, wasn't her? I'd get her back on board and I'd get them filming again, even if it made a loss. I wouldn't care. I love Dallas. Uh, 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 one of the best TV themes of all time. Oh, yes. Um, uh, I haven't forgotten, Vectis. We do that at the end, as well you know. As well you know. We do that at the end. How could I forget? Any do I ever forget a birthday on this programme? No. We do birthdays at the end. So, uh, Christina, yes, indeed, she is in uh, uh, originally from Texas, uh, and she does her own barbecue. Oh, lovely. I, I, I mean, barbecues are such a blooming pain to do, aren't they? Getting all that stuff out. When you can just walk into the kitchen and turn the grill on, dear. You're mucking around with all that stuff, Christina, dear. <laughs> I'm glad to see John doesn't watch Chav TV. Oh, it is horrendous. Chav TV is horrendous. I see there was another some sort of incident last night again. Um, in East London or something. <clears throat> Crowds of people gathering and attacking the police and all that. I mean, this, this country is just becoming completely vile. We need water cannons. Oh, Boris has got the water cannons. That's what we need to control people. Water cannons. And I do blame a lot of it on the television that we have now. For example, Big Brother last night. Big Brother last night. Um, look at this. Shocking scenes aired on Sunday evening. Now, I don't watch this. This is, I got this from this morning's uh, Daily Mirror. Shocking scenes aired on Sunday evening as the Big Brother house descended into chaos with three mass brawls. Breaking out, forcing security to storm the house. Security held back um, the contestants after pockets of violence broke out when the Dream Boys hunk Loton... Is that his name? <laughs> Loton? Where did he go? <laughs> what a strange name. Loton held a drink at Isabel when she insulted his ability to be a role model to his son. See, they can't control themselves, these people. Big brother bosses 
plied the group with boos and asked them to describe each other's personality traits in a game which started off tense and finished off with a house at loggerheads. I mean, it's just awful. People screaming and shouting and not not as in a drama situation, but as in what me, I or you would look at and that this is just like a normal house. This is how it is OK to act. Young people are watching this stuff. And then they go, and I'm sure, I'm pretty sure this is a lot to do what's wrong in this country today. And America, in particular. Mass brawling, people just mouthing off to each other, left, right and centre, because they've seen it on the television and they think that is acceptable behaviour. I'm, I'm pretty sure it's a lot of it's down to this trash television that keeps coming on all the time. I don't watch it. Love Island and all that. You know, let's fight and sleep with as many people as possible. That's that's the basis of Love Island. Ghastly people. And in a way, it's not their fault. That's what they've seen on the telly. <clears throat> and you can imagine the producers of these programmes, you know, egging them on. Oh, go on, go and say something nasty to her. Go on, really upset her and let's film it. That's what it's all about now, television, I'm afraid. There are some little pockets of excitement on the telly now and again. I have to say, Doctor Who, for example, this weekend. Did you see that? Fantastic. Doctor Who was fantastic on Saturday night and he keeps trying to regenerate. Anyone notice that? It's happened about three times now throughout this series. The regeneration is happening. I gather next week's one is really good. There will, of course, be spoilers out there. I suggest you don't read spoilers or anything like that because it just ruins the show. Don't read it. Don't read them. All right. And then Casualty, that was good as well. Dr. Chow is getting off with the ambulance man, wasn't, wasn't she? But then they had a big row because she's a bit straight laced. She only understands rule books. She can't deviate from a rule book. You know, so if something's happening is a little bit personal, but she thinks she has to report it as happened on Saturday night, then she reported straight away. So what the storyline was. Elderly couple. The elderly man is to be taken away from his wife to go and live in a home. He doesn't want that, and neither does she. So they drive onto a cliff and uh, or a beach somewhere. They both take a load of pills and hopefully die, except that they don't. So they're then taken into hospital. Um, Dr Chow finds out what happens and rings the police. This woman gave her husband pills to die. Without understanding the reason. I can completely understand that, can't you? And actually, what a wonderful way to go. You're with the, the, the person that you've loved more than anything else for years and years and years. And you both want to die together. Why not? Why not? Why not? Well, because it's illegal. That's why not. But you understand what I mean. Why not? But not Dr Chow. She don't understand all that side of it. Picks up the phone straight away. The police come round. Then Dr Chow goes to her ambulance man. Now the ambulance man understands what's going on there. And they start having a row and she walks off and all that business. Very exciting. Casualty. And I've still got to watch this afternoon that excellent programme on BBC One in full colour. And stereo, with those of you with Nikam digital encoders. Poldark. We like Poldark, don't we? I love Poldark. Anyone watch Poldark? So that's the television at the moment. Um, Thank God we don't live in Turkey, says John. What's going on there? I don't know what's going on in Turkey. Is something happening there as well? A good morning to Angel Heart. Morning, Angel. Hello. Do you have a tan or is my colour setting gone wrong? No, I've got a very strong tan at the moment. Very strong tan. Either that or it could be liver failure. I'm not quite sure. <laughs> and as you can see, the weight is falling off at the moment. Lovely angel. She only lives up the road, angel. Don't you, darling? Hey, she's got a beautiful garden. I've seen pictures. Vectis says my kids watch you now and now they dress up in boring jackets. Do they, what do you mean boring jackets? This is not a boring jacket. How dare you? Would you like something more outrageous tomorrow? Would you like my Union Jack jacket tomorrow? I've got that tomorrow. Eh? 
Christina has been to South Fork. She says it's okay there. Oh, I'd love to go to South Fork. You can have, I think they still do tours. I will have to come to Dallas one day. I think I would like to come to Dallas. That would be excellent, I reckon. Uh, yesterday for lunch. I had a lovely lunch yesterday. Sunday dinners are not really Sunday dinners for me. Um, they're just a, like a, a normal meal that I have during the week. And I had um, uh, my Slimmer's World Fry Up, which is a few sprays of, of Fry Light. Just a spray, that's like a spray oil thing. A few, thing, uh, a few sprays of Fry Light. Uh, a couple of eggs. Two... Packets of onions. I love fried onions. You know when you're going past the hot dog stand at the fun fair? Or the bloke out in the street in London. Oh, you don't see him much out in London. And you smell all oh, those hot dogs smell lovely. It's not the dead animal that's smelling. You are smelling the fried onions. Save a pig and just have a fried onion sandwich. That's just as nice. You will enjoy it just as much. Absolutely. It's the fried onions, and I love, love onions. I had two whole packets, because you get them in, you get in Waitrose, and then red onions, very strong. Two, they come in like packets like that, and they're like folded over, and that's a pound. Uh, but, but there's really two packets there, rather than one. You just have one. But I had two packets of fried onions, and a whole tin of baked beans, and what was the other thing I had? Oh, God, I can't remember now. Two eggs. Oh, delicious. That was my that was my dinner yesterday, my lunch. And when I came back from uh, work, I had two corn steaks with baked beans on the top. A whole tin. We don't muck around with half tins of baked beans. A whole tin of baked beans. Completely sin-free if you go to Slimmer's World. So that was my um, dinner yesterday. Now, I a while ago, about a week ago, I think it was, no, two weeks ago, I cooked some rice. Now, perhaps you all advise me on this one. Because um, I did a, a, a vegetable rice dish, which is rice and different vegetables chopped up in it, cooked, eaten. I did quite a lot and I froze three portions of it. Now, recently I've been looking around on the Internet because I someone said to me, you're not supposed to reheat rice. Um, so they've been in the fridge two weeks and I thought I'll have some today and I've got one out. And I'm thinking more and more, hang on a minute, you know, is, is this true about the reheating rice? So what, what I've actually got the three portions out that I froze to unfreeze and chuck away. I mean, even if you say now, no, it'll be all right. Too late now because they're getting unfrozen in the garden. And then I just chucked them. Oh, I thought to myself, you know, for the sake of a few quid, it's just not worth the risk, is it? Food poisoning is not funny. Oh, God. You know, both ends. Food poison is one of the worst things ever. So I chucked it all away in the end. I hope I've not wasted it unnecessarily. But I have read some of this, some sort of bacteria in rice or something that um, uh, becomes alive when you first cook it, although not damaging, I, I think. But the second time you cook it, it's like, you know, bursting into life here. And I don't, want th I don't want to eat something only to have my stomach being eaten itself. Anyone know that? Do you re-eat rice? I'm not sure. Um... Let's have a look. All oh, right, I don't know that story, John. I don't really do gay rights stuff on here, though, you know. Um, apparently, it was a gay pride march in Turkey. Police were attacked. It, attacking it. What are rubber bullets? Do they not kill someone? The rubber, rubber bullets don't kill you, do you? But it's all going off there. Ed Sheeran wrapped the rainbow flag around him for support at Glastonbury last night. Oh, were you watching that, were you? I'm still waiting for Barry Manilow to make an appearance on Glastonbury. That would be quite nice, wouldn't it, eh? Now, if you're thinking of going on holiday, beware of sharks. Have you seen this this morning? This is in the Swimming's Telegraph. Oh, we've gone all posh today. The Telegraph. I don't usually read the Telegraph. Look at this. A beach popular in a Majorcan holiday resort. Now, where is it? Oh, Magaluf. It all goes on there, apparently, doesn't it? One of my close friends, and I'm not allowed to mention her name, says the stories are true. Magaluf, it all goes on in Magaluf. They're all at it. In Magaluf, that's true. <clears throat> An eight-foot shark was spotted near swimmers uh, close to Magaluf after midday on Saturday. 
Photos were taken by stunned onlookers, showing the shark swimming towards a group of people, including children on lilos. Well, I'm not surprised it swam to They're probably more tasty, the little young ones, aren't they? It's like you lot eating lamb. Poor little lambs. It's bad enough eating the mum and dad sheeps, but the little baby lambs, they've only just come out. So presumably, in the same sort of sense, children would taste better than adults. I can understand that. I can understand the sharks swimming towards the children. One local said first aiders sounded the alarm by yelling, everybody out of the water. I wonder if that actually works. And I, I, I say that because the amount of times I've been in places and a fire alarm goes off and no one moves. It happened once in a hotel in Vegas to me and my mate. We were in Vegas at the Flamingo Hotel. It was probably the worst hotel there is there. It was so cheap and cheerful. But nevertheless, we were staying at the Flamingo Hotel. And this fire alarm went up and it was really noisy and it had a voice. Please leave the area. Beep, beep. Please leave your rooms. Beep. We didn't move. And neither did anyone else. I don't think people take any notice of fire alarms. Isn't that strange and mysterious? Have you noticed that? Ever been anywhere and a fire alarm goes off? You just carry on drinking your drink or doing what you're doing. Happened in the swimming pool the other day. Now, they test their fire alarms in the swimming pool, I think 11.30 on a Friday morning. And possibly a Monday morning as well. And this was a Thursday and it went off about 12 o'clock. Ling! I looked at the clock and I thought, oh, it's not the usual time to do a fire alarm test. But it'll probably be all right. Why didn't I immediately get out of the water and start moving towards the fire exit? How stupid can I be? But of course, it's not just me. It's everyone. No one moves when there's a fire alarm. Have you found that? What examples have you got of that? Did, did you ever hear a fire alarm and you think, oh, it's probably just a fault. You do not think for one moment that it could actually be a fire, do you? Certainly the hotel, hotel in Vegas, no one moved. We didn't any do hear any doors opening or closing or people running down the stairs. Nothing. People don't seem to take any notice of fire alarms. Isn't that strange and mysterious? I wonder if it works for the sharks. When people say, oh, there's a shark, do people carry on swimming? Mind you, you could probably see the shark, couldn't you? Um, the beach was closed on Sunday after a shark, thought to be the same one, was spotted again. It reopened hours later, but lifeguards in the water were stopping people from swimming too far out. I should think they were as well. Very, very dangerous. So now it's, it's dangerous even to go on holiday now. For sharks swimming around all over the place. Australia, one of the dan most dangerous places in the world. Spiders, snakes, sharks, it's all there. And, of course, those, um, what are they called? Those um, uh, box blue jellyfish. Very, da they kill you, jellyfish. People don't realise that. They are very, very dangerous, some jellyfish. Not just a sting. You can actually die from a jellyfish sting. Did you know that? Very, very interesting. It really is, yes. Uh, I had a message to ask you, boys and girls. Someone is trying to track someone down in Brighton. So if you know this person, I'll pass on the message to you. Uh, it's from Julian Clark, one of our friends who lives in... Palma del Mallorca in Spain. Is that how you say it? He used to be a hypnotist. Anyway, it says, um, Chris... Uh, asking a huge favour, could you please ask your viewers of the whereabouts of a chap named Lee Cole? Lee Cole. We were great mates back in the 90s, but lost touch. He would be in his early 40s uh, by now, and possibly in the Brighton area. Would love to make contact again. So that's from Julian. OK, so Lee Cole. If you know Lee Cole and he was living in Brighton for a while, um, then uh, do get in touch and I should pass on your message uh, to Julian, OK? Rightio, uh, there we are. Ray Reynolds has just joined us today. Thanks for a night, great night. It was a, it was a really good night. 
at the Camden Eye. And Ray and Johnny, because Camden Tube Station is just across the road, you see. Um, are you going, Shania? Already, dear. I haven't done the birthdays yet, dear. I'll, I'll do them soon. What is the time? Oh, yeah, it's about time to do the birthdays, isn't it? I think so. Um, Ray, uh, Ray, the, Ray and uh, Johnny Key, who's a very good friend of uh, Ray's, and indeed mine as well, they had their um, Heidi High yellow jackets on and then went and got their ukuleles and literally stood on the steps outside the tube station and played their ukuleles, which was fantastic. And there's a great picture of him and that with the Camden Town tube station at the top, the, the um, actually standing on the steps. I don't think you could do that in a rush hour, Ray. <laughs> Possibly you couldn't do that in a rush hour, right? Okie doke. Um, I think that's about it today, boys and girls. I was just going to read this out to you. Uh, the supermarkets may be changing the way that they price goods. Now, this is interesting. In this morning's sun, supermarkets could introduce surge pricing in a move similar to Uber's price charges on busy nights. If this comes into force, it could forever change households' shopping budgets as fixed prices are thrown out the window. Now, this, I'm, I, I, I'm a little bit worried about this. And to me, it just seems yet another way to squeeze more money out of us. It's a little bit with all these monthly pays and subscriptions. For example, um, you know, years ago when I was a child or when I was a young man, you, you were never able to pay car insurance monthly. Yeah, you know, that was the price and you, you just had to pay it. Now it's monthly. And by making it monthly, they can charge you even more. You know, if I said to you, um, OK, your car insurance is £200. Would that be difficult for you to pay that straight up? P possibly it would. But if I then said to you, OK, well, it's not £200, but pay us £40 a month. Now, you'll probably swallow that. But actually, over the year, you've then, instead of paying £200, paid £480. Do you think they did that for your convenience or so that they could jack up the money even further? Yeah, exactly. All this monthly paying for stuff all the time is just a way to extract even more money from you. <clears throat> I mean, to pay monthly costs more anyway. Usually it's another 30 or 40 quid to do it that way. But it's the actual cost of the insurance, you see. It used to be 200 now you're paying annual uh, over the months. It's four hundred and forty. That's how they do it. I don't. I, th I don't think a lot of people are aware of 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 how they've done that and how we've been hoodwinked. Oh, it's quite acceptable to pay monthly. <clears throat> yes, of course it is. Then they can get more out of you. That's what all that's about. And I have the feeling the supermarkets are about to do the same. I don't know what the markup on food is. My guess is is it isn't too much. There's a big supermarket price war going on. It's been going on for years. Retail experts predict that fixed prices in shops will be pretty much non-existent in five years' time, the Mirror reports. Change including Tesco's, Sainsbury's and Morrison's are said to be considering the change in line with e-prices which change with demand. Traditional paper price tags on shelves could be updated to electronic versions which could easily be uh, quickly changed. So someone, you know, in an office somewhere pushes a button and that 5p becomes 10p suddenly. Uh, experts say this could lead to surge style pricing in British shops, which already exists in the US and parts of Europe. Families and struggling people would be hit with extra stress when planning their weekly shops on this system. They could end up forking up more than expected when they pile in their favourite products to shopping trolleys, especially seasonal items like ice cream and burgers. Uh, Marks and Spencers tested out electronic food tags in some stores last year and offered special deals before 11 o'clock to encourage people to buy their lunch before the usual rush. So, I mean, I, I mean I, it would be OK for me. You know, I've got times free at all times, if you see what I mean. I mean, I have no problem at going to the supermarket before 11 o'clock in the morning to save a few quid. I mean, I'd do that. But is this fair? You know, 
I don't like the sound of this at all. I really don't like the sound of that. But um, I have a feeling it would just be used to get even more money out of us, you see. It's wrong. It's just so wrong. All right. Um, ah, Angel says, the answer uh, to the rice question is yes, but you need to be careful. To understand why, rice has be a spore-forming bacteria called bac Bacillus cirrus. The best way to understand this is to think that the spores are being bacteria with hard shells. So when you cook the rice, the bacteria is killed, but the spores remain as the hard shell protects it. The cooked rice is safe to eat as the bacteria level is safe. If kept hot above 63 degrees centigrade, no problems. The problem begins when you start to cool the rice down. As the rice cools, the spores lose the hard shell. The bacteria protected by the shell can then multiply. And if the conditions are warm, it happens very fast. If cooling takes too long, this can produce dangerous levels of bacteria. So um, the golden rules are heat, uh, re reheat rice only once. If you cook your rice using a method, then you rinse under cold water as soon as cooked and then refresh with boiling water that you cannot have reheat. And she gives a, a whole long uh, list of stuff to do there. So thank you very much uh, for that, Angel. I, I, I should play it safe and just chuck it away. Well, I mean, I'll have to chuck it away now because it would have warmed up out there. But... Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I, 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 I'm a bit worried about reheating the rice stuff, so I'm not going to. I'm going to chuck it all away, Angel, and, and, and start again, I think. Right, today's birthdays then. Uh, first of all, 17 years old today is Callum Steele, son of Vectis, brother of Shania. Happy birthday, Callum. Happy birthday to Callum. Yes, what a great age to be, 17 years old. The whole world is ahead of you. Happy birthday, Callum. Have a wonderful day. I know your dad will probably spoil you. You're rotten. Are you ready to be embarrassed when the cake comes out later? I know it will. <laughs> Happy birthday to Maria Tazu. I think it's Maria Sue. I think it's Maria Sue. Happy birthday, Maria. Uh, Dean Craddock. Happy birthday, Dean. Are you still on the KLG estate, dear? 52 years old today. Happy birthday, Dean. Uh, Paul Teasdale Murray. Lots of little faces I know today. Where have you been, Paul? You haven't been to my karaoke lately. Happy birthday to you, sir. Uh, ben Jameson. Happy birthday, Jet Ben. Nice to see you. 39. Gosh, 39 you are now. Jordan Williams. Hello, Jordan. 26 today. You're very quiet as well recently. Happy birthday, Jordan. Uh, Joy Smith today is 42 years old. DJ Rich B. Greetings, Rich B. Happy birthday to Rich. I don't do DJing anymore, Rich. I gave it up. Couldn't stand it any longer. Banging noises all the time. Especially like dreadful R&B. Happy birthday, Rich B. And uh, Joshua Halliwell Smith today is 41 years old. Happy birthday, gang. <laughs> Happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday to you. Enjoy your birthdays, gang. I'm going now. Thank you very much. Been a pleasure to talk to you as always. Join us tonight, every Monday night. It's karaoke at Central Station Bar in Wharfdale Road, King's Cross. Uh, we start at 8 o'clock, finish at 11.30 and it's cheap drinks as well at Central Station, Wharfdale Road in King's Cross. Monday nights, 8 till 11.30. Enjoy your Monday, and I'll see you again very soon. Cheerio now.